Hi, I'm Matthias and this is Hattie, and welcome to Study Time's Level 2 Electricity and Magnetism exam strategy video. This exam focuses on the science behind electricity and magnetism, both as two separate phenomena and together as electromagnetism. It's really important for understanding the behaviour of everyday objects, and it's also one of the oldest branches of physics. Think of lightning. The main concepts you'll be covering at Level 2 are static electricity, DC electricity and electromagnetism. The questions you'll be expected to answer are a mixture of calculation and explanation questions. The calculations at Merit and Excellence will often involve multiple steps, and the explanation questions usually involve how a system will change when a change is made. Typically there are three to four questions on the exam, and those questions will be broken down into little subparts. That's quite a lot to answer in an hour, so you'll want to make sure that you're really on top of your game. To make sure you can do that in the exam, we'd really recommend practicing under timed conditions. So sit down for an hour with a paper and make sure that you can actually answer the whole paper in that hour. In the actual exam, keep your eyes on the exam clock to make sure you're managing your time well. The nice thing about the level two electricity topic is that each question is usually an individual concept. For example, you may have a single question on DC circuits that involves components of calculating things to do with the circuit and then explaining what happens when something in the circuit changes. Make sure you know how voltage and current behave in a circuit, both in series and in parallel. In addition, you may be required to draw circuit diagrams, so make sure you know what each component looks like and how to draw a series in parallel circuits. For the description part, you'll be expected to discuss how something changes when you make a change in the circuit. For example, how does the brightness of a bulb change when the resistance increases? Well, if the resistance increases, that means the current drops, which means the power delivered to the bulb is less, which means the bulb is less bright. There will also be a question on either motors or generators. This can be either calculation based or conceptual based. And conceptually they're one of the more difficult parts of the topic, but it's absolutely fundamental knowledge. They'll usually be put into a practical context, like a motor in a car. So the idea is that if you run a current through a wire in a magnetic field, then a magnetic force will be in induced on that wire, and that will cause it to move. That's called the motor effect. A generator is when you want to actually induce a current. So that's when you move a wire through a magnetic field, and that causes electrons to move in the wire, causing a current. Every year, NCA publishes a list of common mistakes that students make in the exam. So here's a few that you shouldn't do in your exam. Often students couldn't tell the difference between a magnetic field and an electric field. Remember that an electric field is created by the separation of charge, be it charged plates or charged wire. A magnetic field, on the other hand, is usually created by a permanent magnet or by charges moving through a wire. Another really common mistake is students not using SI units in their calculations and in their answers. For example, converting millicoulombs into coulombs. A really good study strategy here is to make a large table of all of the quantities and their SI units so that you know how to convert them to the SI units in order to get the correct calculations. Another thing that came up really commonly is that students had trouble choosing the correct formula to answer a question. Like all the physics standards, this one involves a lot of different formulae and they can be really confusing if you're not properly familiar with them. We'd recommend knowing what each symbol stands for, what unit it's measured in, and also what context to use it in. And a really good way of doing this is to put them all in a big mind map at home and annotate them with things like, what does this symbol mean? When would I use this? Another mistake that will come up is that people will use the right hand rule incorrectly. And really the only way to get around this is to make sure you're using it at home when you do practice questions and probably make sure you don't use your left hand instead. <laughs> We'll now run over some important but often really difficult concepts. First is being able to calculate the total resistance of a circuit, both in series and parallel. The way that I like to remember which formula to use is that in series you're just adding up each of the resistances, but in parallel you've got a resistance over a resistance. So you have to use the formula that has 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, so on and so forth. Another tricky concept is the idea of conventional current. You have Benjamin Franklin to thank for this. Before they knew about electrons, it was just assumed that current moved in the positive to negative direction. You can tell because of the positive and negative terminal of the battery. In reality, we know that electrons are repelled from the negative plate of the battery, so they move from negative to positive. 
In general, the direction of the current in level 2 is conventional current, but when they ask about the direction of electrons, you use the opposite. Another really important convention is the direction of magnetic fields. We use an X to denote a magnetic field that's going into the page, and a dot to denote a magnetic field that's coming out of the page. The way that I remember this is by using an arrow. If you fire an arrow into a page, you see the tail fins, but if an arrow's flying at you, you see a point. We also want to make sure that you're super confident with all the terminology in this exam, because you can be thrown some really tricky explanation questions. The best way to make sure you have time to answer these fully is to be really confident with the basics. People often get little bits of terminology mixed up. For example, you need to make sure you can distinguish in your mind that current is the flow of electricity across a conductor and voltage is the potential difference across a component in the circuit. Anytime you're doing a practice question at home, especially if a word is bolded in the question, you should note that down and make sure you know the definition of it so that they are familiar to you when they crop up in the exam. Like the other Level 2 Physics standards, Merit and Excellence questions often involve multiple steps for calculations. Again, a really good strategy is just to write down everything that you know about the scenario and then write down what you're trying to find. You usually won't have a single equation that allows you to get to the final answer, but you may have to use two or three different equations to get there. So write down any equations that you think are relevant and try to calculate the quantities that will eventually get you to the final answer. It may take a little bit of out of the box thinking and a little bit of problem solving, but if you practice them enough, you'll get there in the end. We've covered some really important parts of the content and strategies to approach it, but we haven't covered everything. So make sure you check out the last three or four years of past exams to figure out exactly what you may be asked. We'd also recommend checking out the study time walkthrough guides. They're available for free online or to purchase in print and they're designed to walk you through all the content you'll need for this exam. So you'll be all set to ace it. So good luck. Good luck.